Hi guys, today I'd like to take a look at dissecting a small piece of a Joe Rogan podcast where Dr. Rhonda Patrick discusses why obese people may want to consider losing weight for their health, but more specifically for their children's health because of genetic changes that occur when a person is overweight. I'll explain the science for you as we go along and make corrections where necessary. Let's jump in. Learn Your Body, a science-based education. If you're unfamiliar with who I am, I'm a PhD student in molecular medicine. I'm currently a researcher in autophagy and apoptosis lab, and I have other experience in labs, as well as hold my master's in exercise physiology. On this podcast, Dr. Patrick and Joe are discussing how overweight people can pass on potentially unfavorable genetics to their kids. Let's listen. And, and something I, I think people don't realize is that, you know, epigenetics, which is basically the transference of, um, it's, it's heritable, like you can transfer things um, that happen to you in your lifestyle without actually altering the sequence of DNA. And you can do that by changing how much a gene is activated or not activated. Here, she's talking about epigenetics. You may already be aware that our cells all contain genes, which is just information for building things within our cells. These genes are made of DNA, and when a cell needs something, it reads the specific gene it needs and produces, based on the instructions within that gene, a protein with a function in the cell. Well, epigenetics are a regulation of that process because our genes aren't always open and accessible. They can be closed and stored away, like you putting something in your garage because you might need it one day for it to sit there for five years. <laughs> your cells do similar things and they close genes by employing epigenetic modifications like tags. If genes are tagged, they can be repressed or expressed, meaning the cell will either read them less often or more often. Tags like phosphorylation, methylation, acetylation, and others all play a role in determining if the cell will read the gene or not. Sometimes this is beneficial, sometimes it can be harmful. I'll get into that after this. Bear with me. And there's been studies, lots and lots of stud studies in animals showing this to be the case. Of course, that's animals and how much of that actually translates to humans, but there was a really interesting study a couple of years ago, I think it was like 2015, that was published that looked at the effect of obesity. And obesity was actually looked at not in the mothers, but the fathers. Um, and so uh, sperm DNA was collected from, from males that were obese and males that were lean. And they, there's a variety of different genes, like hundreds of different genes that were looked at. And about 300 different genes were different in how they were activated or not activated in the sperm DNA of the obese men. And a lot of those genes had to do with cognition, learning memory, and metabolism. So she references a study, and I'm pretty certain it's this one. I'll link it for you to look over. I'm only showing you a small piece of the data, but when the researchers probed specific genes for the amount of epigenetic modifications between lean men's sperm and overweight men's sperm, they found differences in epigenetic regulation. Genes related to brain development, BDNF, as well as appetite control, NPY, and other areas. With the assumption that leaner individuals are in the favored state, this would imply that overweight individuals may have unfavorable epigenetic modifications in their sperm that could potentially be passed on to their kids. If, for example, the embryo is developing, the cells of the embryo try to access genes that are tagged as closed, repressed, the embryo will not be able to produce the necessary molecules it needs to grow normally. This can have disastrous consequences, even if the eventual child is born. I'll touch on this again shortly, but there are two bits of positive news. Here's one. So um, that's very interesting, but what was super interesting was that these men, they were morbidly obese, they were very obese. They underwent uh, bariatric surgery, and their sperm DNA was then collected, uh, you know, a couple of months after, and then like close to a year after. And as time went on, their sperm DNA looked like the lean people. So, the, so wow. basically losing the weight, just losing the weight, had an effect on these genes that are involved in cognition and metabolism. She mentions that when these obese individuals underwent weight loss, they had a reversal of their epigenetic differences compared to lean individuals. 
The study had obese men give sperm samples before bariatric surgery, then one week after the surgery, then one year later, and compared the epigenetic tagging amount of many genes. They found that many changed, and if we look at specific ones like earlier, we do see that there are changes after surgery. Admittedly, although I'm showing extremely little of the data and I'm clearly cherry picking to show you changes to get the point across, if you were to read the entire study, I'm not that overwhelmed by the difference. Many of the genes seem mildly changed and some don't change at all. Still, it does change for many. However, we certainly can't jump to the conclusion that this immediately means there will be better outcomes for the babies that are born, but we can still be hopeful that this would prove beneficial. I don't think that's a stretch to her point. Like I said, you know, lots of, of animal studies have shown obesity has a negative effect on like, you know, causing type 1 diabetes later in life and different, you know, cognitive disabilities and things like that. So. You know, it is something like p people that are wanting to conceive might might consider, you know, their, you know, their health before trying to procreate. You know, it, it's it's I'm not saying that, you know, you shouldn't procreate if you're not you know healthy, but it's just something, you know, another thing to think about. Just a quick point when she says procreate, does it strike you that she really comes off as a scientist or is that just me? Very well, we we'll, shall put a female specimen and a male specimen together and they shall procreate. <laughs> That's not a knock on her. I actually really, really like her a lot. Uh, I just find it funny. I, I talk like that too sometimes. Okay, back to it. So because you're saying that these genes that are in this obese man sperm the way they're represented they're, that's going to be passed on to the kid yeah versus the lean version of him pa those genes will be passed on to the kid the kid literally will have a different starting point exactly in life, a which different is crazy. starting point it's totally crazy yeah and i mean of course the the child itself can change things through epigenetics through their right. diet and lifestyle but you're giving them a baseline here right yeah. i mean so it's 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 definitely a very it's a growing field a lot of the research is done in in animals because it's really difficult to, to do that sort of these sorts of experiments in humans finally the second piece of good news aside from the parental weight loss reversing some of these effects the kid may also be able to change the course of their epigenetic modifications because unlike mutations that are without genetic engineering permanent to the actual gene these tags can be removed at any time so they are not permanent the difficulty is between the time the kid is able to actually change their situation and the time the father has passed on this presumably unfavorable genetic background, a lot of developmental damage may have already been done. So it is more so on the father in this situation to enact this change before having kids. That's why she points this all out. Anyway, I think this topic is wildly interesting and I hope you learned a few things with me. I think Dr. Patrick does a great job, although she gets a little, or maybe more so Joe, jumps to a few conclusions that may be premature. It still does speak to the power of genetics. With that, I encourage you to check out the rest of my series, Breaking Down Science and Offering Corrections Where Needed, the Spotlight series, and I hope to have the pleasure of speaking with you in the near future. Thanks for stopping by. Cheers. Cheers.